Greetings and good afternoon from Hot Wong Hollow. This is Jerry. In the last video, we planted a lot of spring bulbs, but since nothing is really emerging at this point, at least nothing significant, I'm going to pass on the bulbs today and answer the questions that you posed to me in the community post. First of all, I want to thank you for all your great questions. Got a lot of questions on particular topics, so I'm going to just go by the topic and then the question. And since we're outside and I am working on this particular disaster right here, as you know, I'm always working on something new. I go from one thing to the next. That's just the way I am, <laughs> which actually leads me to the first question. Where do you get all your energy? Well, I don't know. I think what happens is I get an idea and then I just have to go and do it. I want to see it through to its completion. And I've just always been that way. If I'm starting a new piece of artwork and I get excited about it, I just can't wait for the next day to get to it. So what I'm doing right here is I am changing all my vegetables from the potager and I'm moving into a brand new vegetable garden on a slope. As you can see, it's really an ugly mess. And I think as I answer your garden questions, I might have to be over here digging out some of this horrible quack grass as we talk. Explain what I'm doing so you at least have a clue of what's going on here. Um, this section right here has just been so awful. Every year, I usually plant right into the ground and I'll plant squash or cucumbers, to tomatoes, anything that climbs to go up this cattle panel and every year I have to deal with the same problem. Quack grass, witch's grass, devil's grass, quick grass, scotch grass. It has a lot of different names, but it is the gardener's number one enemy as far as I'm concerned. And every year it comes back because if you leave just so much as an itsy bitsy root of it, there's the culprit right there. This tenacious weed will keep coming back. And so you have to get it out by the root but I am tired of battling with this long skinny bed. As you can see, over the winter, it just took over again. I am so tired of it. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to dig it out by the root once again, throw all the little pieces away. Then I'm putting raised beds in here. Raised beds up off the ground and sitting on stone because I'm just tired of fighting this terrible invasive weed. So as we talk, I will be digging it up. It's not going to be very exciting, but it's something you have to do when you're a gardener. This grass weed has so many names because it is... Uh, bad things often have a lot of names. Quack grass, devil grass, witch grass, quick grass, scotch grass, quack grass, and couch grass. I just call it the monster. You see, what it does... You have to dig it out because even if you leave a small piece, a one inch piece, it will put out little buds and spikes and it will come right back up through the surface and it just travels like a maniac throughout your garden. Base of uh, weeds have some redeeming qualities at least, like Creeping Charlie it smells nice and it's pretty and it puts out a pretty flower. Creeping Jenny is very beautiful, it's just so invasive, but this has absolutely no beauty no good taste and it's just plain ugly and obnoxious and if you get this traveling around your rose bushes oh my goodness it is so difficult to get it out so try to keep it out before you start planting anything by the way i have already filled an entire wheelbarrow with this stuff oh isn't that awful one thing i want to make pretty clear is that i'm just an amateur garden gardener I've been gardening for about 30 years, but I still kill plants all the time. And I make a lot of, have a lot of failures. In fact, um, one of you asked, what became of your ranunculus, your oriental poppies, and all the nursery boxes you did last year? Well, sometimes I just forget to go back and show you when something grew, which is my mistake. And other times it was just an utter failure and I'm just too embarrassed to tell you. The ranunculus, I always get them started. They're off to a wonderful start. They're green and lush and have wonderful roots and then when I put them in the ground no matter what conditions they turn yellow and die that's been happening for two years so I don't have any ranunculus to show you with the oriental poppies I planted 31 roots last year 31 oriental poppy roots 
and then the garden got so lush and thick I kind of lost track of where they were and you know what I never saw them again so I'm hoping they were just growing underground and they just sort of got disappeared in all the greenery and that they will come up this year so I will let you know on that and then with my last year's nursery boxes my success was not nearly as good as it was the first year I did them I had about a 40% success rate the reason is I did not tape them well the tape along the edges became loose and a lot of the boxes uh, they dried out and I didn't even know it because I didn't check them often enough and so that was my mistake. Asked how Godfrey was doing, and as you can see, Godfrey is, what are you, Godfrey, 12 weeks old? He's been chasing a ball, so he's a little bit tuckered out. And he's here in the greenhouse with me. It's about 65 degrees in here. How terrific it is. It feels so good because the wind is blowing and it's very cold outside. So far, I have not seen too many sprouts coming up from all those bulbs I planted but I have no doubt they will soon appear. Well, it just got too windy out there yesterday and you just couldn't hear my voice. It was completely muffled by the wind. So today it's a much prettier sunny day. February, what is it, February 9th? Yes, February 9th. And I'm going to be in the little greenhouse here doing some February seed sowing. So there's a few things that you can put in in February in your trays, which brings me to a question by Mina. Since you have a greenhouse, will you still be using your winter sowing little mini greenhouses in the plastic bins or will you be going back to trays? Well, I'm going to do both because I love the mini greenhouses. I planted 70 of them last year. I made a bit of a mistake, but um, I'll do it right this time. <laughs> anyway, I do love the mini greenhouses for certain plants, but I'm going to go back to trays as well because I want to try out these new trays. They're Charles Doubting trays and you can see how very very short these modules are which means you use a lot far less compost and also of course they're already filled up so you can see how well they drain and how easy they're going to be to pop out of the trays because of those large holes. So I wanted to try these and also they're so sturdy they'll last for years. They're just really hard plastic. So I got a couple of those to use. They also have 60 compartments. I'm also going to use some of my old plastic cheap stuff that I just save and I'm going to try some soil blocks again. Now I tried, tried soil blocks a couple years ago and I didn't like them. I didn't like them because I think they're kind of a hassle to do. This is a this is a little soil blocker. I'm not doing any of these tiny ones. I, I just think it's, it's kind of a hassle to get the ratio right to, in order to get these t little blocks to hold together. But since I had a soil blocker anyway, I thought I would give them a second try. I'm willing to try anything at least three times if it doesn't work the first time. So I'm going to do some sweet peas in these. And I'm going to go ahead and be planting some things while I answer some more questions. So I got a few questions about my story as far as a garden gardener goes. And as I will reiterate, once again, I am simply an amateur gardener. I have been gardening for about, seriously gardening for about 30 years. My first garden, however, was probably, my first thing I ever planted was um, carrots. And I was probably about seven or eight years old. And the reason I had a packet of carrots in the first place, because I had no gardeners in my family. I planted them because we used to earn money to go to Bible camp by selling garden seeds door to door. Now, because I'm 69 years old and I was raised in a different era, you could go door to door and sell seeds and you could be perfectly safe. But anyway, I remember having one packet of carrot seeds left from my my little, I must have had a very successful sale because we did get to go to Bible camp that year. But, um, whoops. I took the packet and I planted these little seeds in just nothing but pure dirt. It was, I, I tell you, it was just dried out Colorado dirt. But they grew. They actually grew. I don't know how. I, I must have watered them well. But they did grow. The problem was, and I think I've told this story before, I kept pulling them up 
to see how they were doing. And I'd pick up, pull them up when they were an inch and then I'd bury them again. Well, eventually when they were about three or four inches long, I just pulled them up and ate them. That was my first gardening experience. Then I never really had another garden until I was a young mother and living in Colorado. And all I could afford were garden seeds. So I had a packet of bachelor buttons, a packet of Cosmos, and a packet of, what was it? And a packet of Larkspur. And they just grow be grew beautifully in the Colorado weather. And then also in that, that garden, I grew some California, orange California poppies and a big strawberry bed, and they were great too. But it wasn't until I moved to Tennessee quite some years later that I actually started getting serious about having flower gardens. And the first garden I ever grew was a very small herb garden right off the porch. I probably, it wasn't any bigger than three foot by eight foot. And that is what I recommend you to do if you are a beginner gardener and you want to start out. Start out small. My advice to a beginner gardener, which I was also asked, is to start out small and good grow some things that are going to be easy for you and herbs are very easy to grow. So start out with a little patch and it'll give you some confidence when you see those things growing or and try some very easy seeds such as zinnias. Cosmos they can be a little difficult but zinnias are just so tried and true. I would absolutely do some zinnias, maybe some cosmos and some of the simple annual flowers that a lot of the flower farmers grow. And I would just start out small and start getting a little bit of success under your belt. It'll give you happiness and com comfort and joy. And also learn about roses and just plant maybe just one rose. Find yourself a rose. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a rose. You can get a $10 bare root rose from Walmart or the garden center and put it in a pot or in the ground and get yourself a rose growing. Learn everything you can about flowers that you love and learn how to grow them because there's so much information now. There's so many gardeners on YouTube and so many garden books that it's really easy to get started these days in gardening. Okay, I'm sorry. I said I was going to put sweet peas in here. That's not true. I'm going to put snow peas in here from my, from last year's garden. Uh, snow peas and some snap peas. And I can't wait to see how these little modules work out. Uh, were there any gardeners in my family? Not at all. My mother had the Victory Garden during the World War II. She was in charge of the Victory Garden for her family. And she absolutely hated it. She hated it. She never wanted a garden again. And when we moved to the suburbs, when I was a child, and we moved to the suburbs, she had a landscaper come in <laughs> and put in all the same plants that he put in at everybody else's house on the block. But she did plant tulip bulbs once in a while. I'll never forget my, my brother and uh, my brothers and my my sister and I. We went out. We lived in a place that was just a brand new suburb. And so beyond our block, there was nothing but country. It was very nice. Nothing but countryside. And we went out and picked, dug up a bunch of cactus. Just cactus. I don't know how we did it because it was this really treacherous sort of a Colorado cactus. We brought it home and we planted it on my mother's hillside. Oh my goodness, that stuff took over. It was absolutely treacherous. Took my mother years to get that stuff out of there. But we thought we were doing her a favor. Oh, well, my favorite gardeners on YouTube, I was asked. Um, well, there's so many gardeners on YouTube. I will tell you, I started my YouTube channel 10 years ago. You can see that it's a very slow growing channel because I've had it for a long time. And at that time, there weren't very many gardeners on YouTube. There, most of them had were television programs from from gardening from the past and so they they had switched from television programming and just put the videos on YouTube so there just weren't very many but now my goodness there's just thousands and thousands of them so it's hard to say which are my favorites but I do have people that I watch pretty consistently 
Most of them, or many of them, are British gardeners. I guess I just like that style. And for vegetable gardening, I like a channel called the Grow Veg. Just plain old Grow Veg. I like Charles Dowding. I like Hugh Richards. Those are my vegetable people that I like to go to. And for flowers, oh my goodness, I used to love a channel called Lavender and Leeks. She had a little allotment. Her name is Katie, a really sweet young woman. And she doesn't do a lot of videos of gardening anymore because I think they moved to another place in the country. She'll probably keep start them up again, but you can look at all her old videos. That's Lavender and Leeks. Then I also like a woman called Middle Size Garden. And she features a lot of information from professional British gardeners that take care of some of these wonderful manor houses and castles and walled gardens in England. So she's got a lot of beautiful beauty on her channel. Um, American gardeners, I absolutely, I love Pete. P. Allen Smith. I really do like him a lot. I think he's a nice guy, but his gardening, I mean, he's got buckets of money and his gardening is just a little bit beyond anything most of us can do. So it, within reason, but it's interesting to watch what can be done if you have loads of money and lots of help. So I was asked if I always loved gardening. And I guess I don't know that I've always loved gardening. Well, maybe I, I have always loved gardening because even when I lived in apartment buildings, I grew plants in terrariums. I remember when that was a big thing, is to have a terrarium hanging from a ma macrame cord or something like that. So, yes, I think I've always loved gardening because who doesn't love flowers? I mean, what is there not to love about gardening and growing things and food? Uh, flowers are beautiful. Food, growing food in your garden is beautiful. Corn on a stalk is beautiful. Broccoli, all of it. They're all so gorgeous. My favorite flowers are the antique flowers. The flowers from, I probably, from my childhood that I would pass on my way to school. There was one house that had snapdragons and foxglove growing all along the fence, cosmos and larkspur. So uh, maybe that's why those were the first things that I ever planted in my own gardens. And so beautiful were they that I just would take my time walking past that fence. So snapdragons, foxglove, hollyhocks, those are the flowers that I love. And I will do my best to try to grow them every year until I finally get it right. And I have, for some reason, a terrible time growing. Snapdragons, isn't that weird? S snapdragons just simply do not like me or, or my climate or something. But hey, I'm going to try some in these trays and see how they do. Not now, but for now we're doing the February sowing. So the peas are going to be fine. Our little snow peas and our bonbon peas. And I'm just going to cover these with a little bit of compost. Vermiculite. Uh, give them a good water and put them aside. Um, I was asked how I found this place because I did move here from Colorado and it has been 30 years since I've been here. I was doing art shows. I should say we were doing art shows on the East Coast, Pennsylvania to be exact. And one of my booth neighbors, another a fellow artist in another booth, lived in Tennessee and she was showing me photographs of how beautiful it was and so on the way home we drove through Tennessee we actually looked at a few houses we found this this house which at the time was pretty dilapidated and mess messy but I fell in love with the house I fell in love with the fact that it had land and a year later we were living here okay I've added a a slight layer of um compost over the top of this. It's got perlite in it. And I gave it a good water and now I'm just going to set it aside and start another batch of onions now. And ask what were my favorite garden books. That's another hard question. I must have 200 garden books and they are absolutely, um, I buy them mostly for the pictures to be honest with you. And I love anything by Emily Tolley. This is Emily Tolley. Mostly she does herbal books. But they also have a lot of flowers in them and a lot of great ideas for your gardens, for your garden bones, 
You'll find roses and annuals and perennials in her books. They are just inspiring with gorgeous layouts and lovely information on growing things. If you want herb gardens, she tells you which ones to buy, uh, how to use them in your garden, what to do with them once you actually have them. Look at these gorgeous herb gardens here. And then she's got books on what to do with those herbs once you've got them, and recipes, decorations. Here you go. There, everything you want to know about coriander, chives, chamomile, calendula, catnip, and everything else. But in addition to that, just beautiful, inspirational pictures, recipes, recipes for potpourri, wreaths, and these are just all-encompassing, beautiful books. So I recommend anything by her. And I also like this book by Lisa Mason Ziegler, Cool Flowers, and it's mostly about hardy annual flowers and growing them in cool weather but she'll give you the list of all the flowers. She tells you how to make the soil blocks. That's when I started making soil blocks, was after reading this book about four or five years ago. And as you can see, I've taken a lot of notes in it. But she also has a garden channel where she gives you lots of information, so go check her out. Lisa Mason Ziegler. She's got a very good channel that she will really tell you a lot. I've also noticed um, just recently, I don't know if it's a trend or if it's always been this way, a lot of professional flower farmers are online now from all over the world. Uh, and they will give you a lot of information on growing flowers. So it's just something you've got to keep your eyes open and get a lot of inspiration. But mainly, you're going to learn, I think, by trial and error. That's how I learned. I kill lots of plants, unfortunately, and but I'll try to keep growing them until I get it right. Another question I was asked was uh, about James. Would James ever consider being in a video? James is my husband. You know that. Um, and the answer is, nope, he doesn't want to be in a video. <laughs> he doesn't want to be in a video at all. I'm trying to convince him one day to make his delicious clam chowder because he really is a great cook. And maybe one day I can talk him into that. We'll see. Someone else asked me, what does your husband do while you're out here puttering around in the garden? That wasn't the way it was expressed, but <laughs> it's... um. Well, he has his own thing. My husband loves to read. He loves to study. He loves words. He's a wordsmith. And so he is often studying the Bible, reading papers, writing a lot. And as a matter of fact, both of us study the Bible every day in the morning. We get up. My favorite time of the day is the morning. I love it between 9 and 10 o'clock. And also between about five and six in the evening on a summer evening because the light is so beautiful the shadows are so lovely and it's a great time to take photographs and videos so james has really been very very busy here in the over the years and built so many things the pergola he helped build the, the, the construction guys he helped them build the barn He's built um, every little arbor that we, you see around here. The only thing he didn't build was this greenhouse because I wanted to do it all on my own. So he's been a hard worker all his life. And at, he's at the point where his back is really in bad shape. And I really don't want him doing any kind of... Oops, I don't know what that was. I hope it didn't break. I really don't want him doing anything that's going to further exacerbate his problem. So he does his thing and I do mine and keeps me young. Grr. Then my 69 years and you know that was it leads to another interesting question which I um, I wrote these questions. I have these questions typed out. Um, I would enjoy hearing how you get your energy, all your energy and you as a woman make it through every season. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what I do. I never slow down. I never slow down. That's just the way I am. I've got a friend who's 89 years old, and she is going all the time, despite everything. 
despite the arthritis, despite the pains and the problems that come with being an older person. But she is just amazing to me. She's kind of like an influence, a very positive influence on me. So I just say, don't give up. Just just keep doing the things that that you enjoy. Um, take joy in life. And I know it's difficult these days to take joy in life, but let's do it because, well, anyway, as far as I'm concerned, God's in charge of everything. So despite what's going on in the world, I think there is a plan. And I put my faith in that. Maybe that's how I keep all, get all my energy and keep my wits about me. And I have a lot of interests. I mean, I really do. I have so many interests. You've, you've got to find interests in things. I, I love art. I love history. I love watching historical document, document documentaries. I love World War II, World War I. I love ancient history. I love gardening. I love collecting. I love old houses. And I love sewing and needlework. And I just have a lot of interests. And that is something that really helps. You just got to have something that you're passionate about. Now, I'm going to use the soil blocks today to uh, do the sweet peas because of the advice of a flower farmer who grows nothing but sweet peas. I try sweet peas every year different ways, but one of the ways this year will be in the soil blocks. So I'm going to give that a try, and as you can see, I have a gazillion different sweet peas here. Because, okay, yes, that is one of my other favorite flowers. The problem with my sweet peas is I can always get the, the stems and the flowers and the tendrils to grow, and they grow pretty strong. And then I just don't get very many flowers. So I'm going to keep on trying until I do. That's another thing. Sometimes you just have to be super persistent in gardening. And of course, most gardeners have pretty good patience because what else, what else can we do? <laughs> we have to have patience because a lot of things just are not going to work for us and maybe they never will. But I will always give something a try until I find out that it just doesn't work in my climate or I don't have the right kind of soil. But sweet peas should grow well here. So we're just going to give them another try this year and hope that things work out. You can see the soil blocks have these little indentations, which is made by the soil blocker. And they're perfect to cushion about two or three little pea seeds in here. So my next one will be the mermaid's dream. And these have been soaking. A little bit. You don't have to soak them though. I don't know that it really makes any difference. But I'm going to put two seeds in each. That way if one doesn't make it, the other will. And if they both make it, they can grow up together. You can hear my little clock ticking. It is actually 60 some degrees today. And here in the little greenhouse it is... Oh, about 70 degrees, but the door is open and I do have ventilation. And I'm just going to lightly cover them with my mixture, my potting mixture here. Asked if we're self-sufficient in our garden and absolutely not. Absolutely not. I wish we were. In the summertime, I absolutely have lots of fresh vegetables and, and lettuces and radishes and tomatoes and peppers and all that sort of thing, but I never have enough to do any canning or anything like that. So that is why I'm changing my garden, vegetable garden plan. The potager is going to be nothing but herbs, roses, and flowers this year, and I'm moving the vegetable garden to the slope that I showed you that I'm working on. And I'm going to get a lot more serious about growing everything. There are, few, there are a few things that you can sow in the month of February, and that's what I've got going here. I've got some Swiss chard, some, some lettuces. They're in the greenhouse. The greenhouse is not heated, but if I find out that there's going to be a frost of some sort, I'll just get a frost cover for these. We've got onions, eggplants, radishes. Crazy about radishes, but our feed, our 
seed and grain store down the road was selling all their packages of seeds at a half at half price and they had all these lovely sounding radishes cherry bell french breakfast and white icicle and they were half price so they were actually only a dollar fifty a pack and these packs are loaded with seed so i better learn to do something special with radishes because i think i'm going to have a lot of them i'm also going to put in some garlic in these little trays and then I'm going to do a lot of the cool cold weather annuals for the flower garden such as the snapdragons, feverfew, love and a mist and maybe a few other things but we'll get back to that at some point. gardeners is that you can start as I said with herbs because herbs are easy and here I had to replace my rosemaries that were killed by the frost this year so I just simply picked up this beautiful little rosemary plant in the grocery store in the produce department and you can get a lot of herbs in the produce department um, basil peppermints rosemaries um what else well all sorts of things um also picked up this little peppermint which may have been a mistake watch out for your mints because they do like to get a little bit invasive but it's a good way to start just get a couple little pots of a few things and see which you can do in a very small space. 